Welcome to the video. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at these things here. This is the latest set of goggles that we've been playing with. These are the Isheen VR D2s, and they are available from Banggood.com. Now, I need to say a very big thank you to Banggood.com for sending us for these to try. And what we're going to do in this video is kind of run through the, uh, the features and functions of this thing, talk about what it's got, what it's not got, and what it's actually like to use. Now, first of all, let's go through what you actually get in the box. Now, I'm not sure if you can see here, but these things are physically a lot smaller than a lot of other goggles on the market. And the box it comes in is uh, only slightly bigger than the goggles themselves. So whoever packed this is really good at Tetris, because in the pack, you get the goggles, you get both antennas, which is so nice that finally actually being able to order goggles that come with some decent antennas. These aren't bad. These are great for park flying. I'm not sure I'd push them to really long range, but you have one that's a circular polarized antenna and you have a little 6 dBi patch as well. And that's obviously the first thing you spot here. This little guy is a diversity set of goggles. The other things that come in the pack, you get the battery for it, which I'll show you in a second. You get the battery charger, just have one of these um, attached but mine came with a little adapter for a UK plug so that was fine. You get a couple of little wipes for the screen and then you get something called the instruction manual which is a very grand way of describing essentially what's a little quick start guide. But what I'll do is I'll quickly go through what's actually in here uh, because for me uh, trying to read this didn't make an awful lot of sense. Maybe I was having a slow day but um, hopefully after you've seen this video it'll explain it in more detail. So the battery itself comes as part of the kit. This is it at the back. Um, I've actually added some Velcro onto both my battery and the strap at the back. This Velcro didn't come, uh, and unfortunately, if you don't have any Velcro in, then this strap that is supplied means the battery just wants to fall out all the time. But it is a 2200 milliamp hour two cell LiPo with the standard kind of six millimeter barrel connector that you get on lots of other goggles now, including things like Fat Sharks. So I've popped that on the back and that works really nicely. The other thing I'll talk about here, let me take one of these antennas off and you can see what kind of connectors. Both the connectors are the same. Uh, they're RPSMA or they have the little uh, pin in the middle. Uh, not a disaster, but for those of us like me who have loads and loads of antennas that are the other way around, that are SMA connectors, that is going to need an adapter to work with any other antennas in the group. There's a little SD card slot at the top, it takes up to a, I think it's a 64 gig little SD card. Uh, that's because this little guy also has a little DVR inside it as well. So let me go through the controls on the front. The band and the channel buttons actually choose between the different frequencies that you can get hold of. This is a full 40 channel receiver in here. So you will get A, B, E, F and also race band. So pretty much whatever your little model is gonna transmit on, this little guy will pick it up. Then we have really two sets of buttons under here. You can think of this set for navigating through things like the DVR menus and this set over here for really navigating through everything else. Now that's this is the little bit that confused me because it wasn't clear about how this all works. So let me power it up and I'll kind of show you this thing in action. So to power it up you just connect the barrel connector into it. It has a little piezoelectric buzzer inside and when it's booted you'll be able to see the screen. There it is. Okay, so uh, what you can see in here is we're actually looking at the AV mode. If I press the camera DVR plus button it takes us between this view which is the view of the DVR and the main screen as well. So let me just very quickly hook up a video and I'll show you what the image looks like inside the screen. So here we are looking at the image in the goggles. Hopefully that will give you an idea of the kind of view. Uh, the field of view is actually very, very nice. The only thing I'm finding is even though we have an adjustable Fresnel lens here, and there's only one Fresnel lens in the kit, even with it right forward, I'm just about able to focus on the screen. So I think those of us that are getting a bit older that um, struggle to focus on things really close up might struggle to get a really clear image without straining your eyes. Now, again, we're gonna press the Cam DVR button. Uh, so at the moment, 
that is on the DVR. You can see at the top right hand corner, we can see like the SD card, the screen and whatnot. To record is really straightforward. You just press the very right hand button here and you'll notice in the bottom right hand corner, the numbers go red and now we're actually recording. My battery is getting a little bit low, so that's why it uh, is starting to squeak. So it does have a low battery alarm. So in terms of comfort, it is reasonably comfortable. The only challenge that we have here is the, the, the nose notch. Uh, those of you that watch my channel a lot know that um, my big conk means that unfortunately sometimes I have to, uh, to, to fit this part of the goggle around my face. And this is nice and big, so I don't have that problem. The problem that I have here is actually the other problem where this is such a large recess and there isn't any foam around it that there is quite a bit of light leak. So you do have a bit of a challenge with that. You can set the DVR for a HD mode. There's absolutely no point in doing that. It has kind of three modes in here already. You access all the DVR menus by pressing and holding the square button while you're on AV2. Um, that's where we were just recording. If you press and hold that, it'll take you through all the settings. To be fair, I would only ever record in the VGA mode. The image here on the screen is an 800 by 480 screen anyway it's only going to record the image at 640 by 480 anyway so bumping up the quality of the dvr isn't going to be fantastic all you're doing is consuming a lot more space on your card and not getting any additional quality so my tip is leave it on vga the card will last a lot longer and you won't pay the penalty of any extra work in the goggles so in summary, what do I think? Well, I think this is another interesting entry into this part of the market. There's an awful lot of these uh, goggles starting to come out that are moving away from the kind of expanded polystyrene foam ones. And there's lots of different versions, each with their own plus and minus points. The thing I would say about this is I do like the size. I like the way they tried to make it more compact. Uh, some of the goggles are very long and big on your face and uh, they can become tiresome. Now this is quite a nice setup and it works reasonably well. I love the fact it comes the antennas and everything in the box. So if you're a brand new FPV pilot and you want it really straightforward and easy, this will get you everything that you need to go out and try FPV. A couple of things here is that um, the frequency and channel screens here are the wrong way around. If I just power it up and show you that. Um, you can see here that mine goes one, two, three, four, five. That's actually the band. And then the other one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, is actually the um, frequency. You can see it's telling me now that the battery is low. You see, things like that, that are quite a cute little trip. Couple of things that aren't on here though, there isn't any AV inputs or AV output. So if you wanted to slave another set of goggles or uh, record it or have it uh, running from something like a ground station, you absolutely can't do it with that. There's no HDMI jacks, none of that is on here. But if you just want a standard definition set of goggles with basic diversity and the ability to record your flights locally inside, then this is definitely worth a look. Last little tip I'll give you, when I got mine, I found that the SD card was a little bit tight and one of my buttons was a little bit um, sticky occasionally. Now I took mine apart to just see what kind of electronics were in here because I'm always interested to see how it's all set up. And when I put it back together, um, everything's actually working a lot better now. So I think that maybe my uh, board, because all the electronics are in this last inch here behind this panel, maybe my board wasn't sighted exactly properly and that was causing my issue. So thanks again to Banggood.com. I'll put a link in the description if you want to go and have a look at these. Again, lots and lots of different goggles in this class now coming out. But if you're a first time FPVer, uh, you can focus on things that are reasonably close to your face and you don't have anything else. So you're looking for everything in the box. Definitely go and have a look at these. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video. There are lots of other videos on the channel and they're carefully ordered into playlists. So you may find that there are other videos on this same subject that you can go and watch. So I would recommend going into the playlist area of Painless360 YouTube channel and looking around and seeing what there is. You never know what you might find. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and happy flying.